Hey guys, Toby Mathis here with the Anderson Business Advisors Podcast. And today I'm joined by Lars Jacobson, a gentleman I've known for, gosh, it's decades now, Lars, that, that yeah. since, uh, since we first started talking. And I, and I want to give a, uh, get an update on Lars. Lars, you, uh, you and I did a podcast uh, probably two, two, three years ago now. Yeah, probably a couple of years, well, a year and a half, two years, yeah. Well, and, and I'll, I'll let Lars tell his story, but uh, in, in a nutshell, a few years, a couple of years ago was during the COVID crisis. We were talking about the impact of what the government was doing on small business. And in this particular case, Lars is up uh, in the north part of northern part of Idaho, right by the border and has businesses that serve a Canadian town. And because of a border <laughs> happening to be right in the middle, uh, has been really impacted by this COVID thing, continues to be, and a lot of people are not aware of the actual impact that it's having on businesses to this day. Not like, hey, this has been a while, but like it's still kicking people in the shins. And so, Lars, first off, thanks for joining me, and I want to, uh, and I want to get get an update. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here, Toby. Thanks for inviting me, and uh, um, love to tell our story and and the fact that as you had mentioned to me, you know, business can just be obliterated by the government if they want to do it. And, you know, not that we've been singled out. This has affected so many people over these three years. In fact, it was just two days ago, April 21st, or sorry, March 21st of 2020, that they closed the border. I remember the day because our sales went like this. I mean, how how many years ago? How many years ago was that? That was three years ago. Yeah, just, just this week. Um, it, it was a devastating thing to see. You know, uh, we purchased this town. It was, it's, it's, there's, it's, the area is called Port Hill, Idaho, and mm -hmm. it's an unincorporated area. Uh, the previous owners had purchased like each business in the town over the years they'd owned it and they were marketing it as buy your own town. And we saw it, Wendy and I saw it and we were thinking about it. It took us about I don't know, about nine months to actually decide and, 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 and do it, you know. I'm going to do a timeout here because you're saying you bought a town, right? Lars is a successful investor. And when I met him, it was all about uh, making money, stock market and all that stuff. And then he gets a calling to take his, basically your whole family, right? How, how many of you did you did you take up there into this area of Idaho? Well, my wife and I have 10 children. Um, one of my daughters is married, I have a granddaughter. Uh, but we, as you say, we, we changed our entire life. Uh, there was, it was mom and brothers and like how many total, like if you counted up how many people we, actually we moved, my family now is around 40, I think right around 40, 42, 39. I don't know. People that moved up here to this little town right at the border. Well, we live in Bonners Ferry. Port Hill is 30 minutes North where the border mm -hmm. is. And, and so you know, I, I could go into all the spiritual things that moved us here, but I basically was instructed. My feeling is, is, you know, your life is now straight up here. Every, everybody, everybody likes transparency that I, <laughs> in my, in my world, everybody well, seems to like transparency. We felt, we felt very direct by God to come here. And so yeah. you moved 40 people up there. Well, everybody made their own decision. I mean, I have a brother and his family came, uh, a sister, her, her family came, my mom and another sister, they came, uh, another sister later and her family came. Uh, it, it hasn't been easy. There's been a lot of, a, a lot of stress, a lot of heartache. I mean, when God, I've, mm -hmm. I've learned over my life, but specifically now, if God asks you to do something, it's probably going to be hard. <laughs> and if you, and if you want proof, just read the Bible. Okay. Cause God asks, yeah, he, he's, he, he asked his son to do the hardest thing of all. So I try very hard not to complain, but it's been a very difficult because I left my whole, my whole old life is gone. Like all the stuff that we used to do together, all the business. Yeah. I mean, we've known each other since the nineties, um, as you were saying, um, that's all gone. And, and we moved here not knowing what we were going to do. And then we saw this town, like, I don't know, a year or so after moving here. And then it took us another nine months to, to you know, and we were called to do that, as you use that word. Um, yeah. And so we bought all these businesses and things were going well. And just north of the, and we are the, like, I throw a rock, Toby, and it lands in Canada. We, we're the border. If they look up Jake's Landing on Google, they're going to see the borders just like. 
200, 300 feet. Jake's landing USA.com. And you can go see, I, I see images of your gas station and your restaurant and all that. Like when, <laughs> when we say they bought kind of the town, they, 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 they bought a lot of businesses that go into this town. And then the only, only business that we don't own is the U S postal service little hut. But I know you do packages too. So like, yeah, that's all the Canadians, right? They, they, they ship it to you and then they drive down and get it. Right. Yes, uh, we have a, a town, Creston, BC, Canada, just six miles north. They would call it 10 kilometers um, and a uh, beautiful little town. And we have, we'd have we have hundreds of packages delivered every day before COVID hit, mm -hmm. hundreds of packages every day. Uh, I think the Christmas, right after we bought it, we bought it in June of 2019. Uh, the We kept all the previous employees, you know, the, uh, the owners stayed with us for a little while and stuff. And we hit over 400 packages in one day leading up to Christmas. And they mm -hmm. said that was the most they'd ever gotten in the 15 or 20 years they'd owned the place. Yeah. So it was expanding. It was growing. It, the, things were things were exciting. You know, in, in, in this town in Canada, this is you're their depot, right? This is where they go get their gas. This is where they get groceries. This is where they go get some. Well, meat. No, no, they have all that up there, too. But it's so much more expensive. Like, for instance, uh, I was just talking with a gentleman the other day who was down and they're paying a dollar sixty nine a liter. We're charging ninety nine cents a liter for for mm -hmm. gas. So even with the exchange rate at a buck thirty five, buck thirty seven, I think it is right now. Um, it, there's one gentleman says, "I saved thirty five dollars a tank." You know, mm -hmm. I had a truck; it was a big tank, but you know. So when I do the conversion, it's a little over a dollar uh, savings per gallon for us to understand. So they come down for that. They can send a package to us, two day free Amazon shipping type of deal. And it doesn't take three weeks to get to them, plus the duty and all the paperwork that, you know, they can just drive down, get some okay. cheap gas, pick up their package. We charge like a dollar for a box, you know, or something, $3 for the size, depending on the size. Uh, and it's a great service for them. They love our little store because, you know, they can come down and get cheese. Cheese up there is, I guess, through the roof and they can't get Tillamook and they love Tillamook and, you know. So there's all these perks that the uh, previous owners of, of this location and all these locations, you know, they just built up this clientele and the Canadians love to come down. It'll come back again. It's just the waiting game because because during COVID, they shut down the border, right? Like they literally just said you can't come across. So no. like, it's we, not we, like you can go hand the packages over the border. We, we couldn't. We couldn't even do that. Right. Um the the border was closed to the extent that 95 percent of our customers could not come to us they had the business exclusion so a handful of businesses up there could come down we were making maybe five percent of sales four percent of you know previous covid you know revenues and, so and what percentage of your business is canadian versus united states uh, citizens uh, probably close to a hundred percent. I mean, we have our little community in Port Hill, um, but you know, maybe three or four people in Port Hill would, you know, stop by a day. How, how close is the closest U S town? Like, like, like little city. So that's where, uh, that's Bonners Ferry, 30 minutes South. It has one light. <laughs> uh, I think the population of Bonners Ferry now is like 2,900, um, mm -hmm. You know, so that's, you, just, you just don't have a lot out there. And so you're the place that they go. And because the government and in its infinite wisdom decided that to not have exceptions, they just closed the border down. And all of a sudden, everybody in that in that area no longer can use you. Yeah. You know, when they made that announcement that they're closing the border on um, March 21st, 2020, uh, my wife and I looked at each other and we go, oh, man. And, you know, we brought the employees together and. We said, okay, we're going to have to cut back on hours and stuff. You know, and my wife's like, this isn't going to last very long. This could last, you know, a few weeks. They have to have the border open. You know, month went by. They were saying it might not open for a long time. We started, reality started hitting us. And what can I tell you? We, uh, I don't know how we've survived it, to be quite frank. You know, but we're still here. We're fighting every day. You know, during, during the worst of COVID, we were only open 12 hours a week, 12 hours for a, a whole week. Now, all right, so this effectively shut down your business. Yes. But aren't there tons of grant programs and things designed to help businesses like <laughs> yours? To So you, 
this is exa- right. Yes. You hear on the news all the time. Well, you know, small business is going to get all these things. And we did get a loan from the SBA uh, that helped us for a few months. Uh, they had a supplemental that we could go after. Uh, it was called the Idle Loan. You, you know about it. What was it? The uh, economic, uh, economic economic injury disaster loan. Yeah, uh, we couldn't get the uh, we couldn't get the supplemental for whatever reason. We tried for I was going back and forth with the SBA for uh, a year and a half. Uh, before they didn't like your financials the because they, because nobody believes that a business got shut down. Yeah, right. They always yeah. say like, oh, you can do something else. And then they want to see your records. And they didn't like your records. They didn't like it that you, that you weren't really able to continue. Like the, the 95 percent of your business got shut down and they were holding that against you. I, I remember all this. Due to no fault of our own, they closed the border and then they penalized us for not having you know income. But they said they're going to support us and get us through that time. But, you know. It's cost, um, it's, it's cost, we're coming up on half a million dollars just not to close. And mm-hmm. that's pretty much, you know, with, with the purchase there, it's pretty much criminalist. But we're now, we're three years. They've kind of opened the border. It's mostly open. Um, last April, April 1st of last year, so it's almost a year now, uh, they removed the total restrictions and let Canadians come in based on certain criteria um, but that criteria was pretty stiff. And so that we saw an increase, but it was maybe 20, 25%. October 1st, just six months ago now, they removed all restrictions. Can, Canadians, all the restrictions, Canada removed all of them. But and the U.S. still has restrictions, right? The U.S. did not reciprocate that. And so we still have some restrictions. One of them is if you're not vaccinated and the community, you know, north of us in, in Creston, um, many of them, I don't know what the percentage is, but many of them, you know, it's a conservative area, uh, are not vaccinated. And they've called us and said they can't come down. You know, you probably heard about the the the, the number one, I think he's number one tennis player yeah. in the world, can't come to the U.S. Open because he's not vaccinated. Correct. You know, so because, because we decided that if you're not vaccinated, you can't come in, you know, and you, even if you've had COVID, they still restrict you. Uh, wh- what else? Like the, these poor Canadians were trying to come down. And I remember when they opened the first time and you were saying they had to drive to another town to get a test. <laughs> so one of the hours. Yeah. Canada had as a restriction. They had to have not the quick, rapid, negative, you know, COVID test, but one of the more. Yeah, that's it. And so uh, they didn't have that in Bonners Ferry. They had to drive to Spokane, which is two and a half hours from the border where we're at. So, you know, where they're at in Creston, you know, a little farther north. So, you know, just call a little over two and a half hours and pay like 90 bucks to get the test. Now, they finally, someone finally started doing it in Bonners Ferry. But still, if they wanted to come down and get gas and save 20, 30 bucks, they would have to drive 30 minutes one way see the doctor, get the test done, wait for the results, pay that money, drive back 30 minutes to cross the way. It wasn't feasible. You know, no. it just wasn't feasible. Now, when you think of a border crossing, everybody has a different vision of what a border crossing is. Is this border crossing like a big gate or is it just a draw, like one of those little things that raises up? What What is it? Is it just some folks sitting out there saying, hey, you just, you just entered <laughs> Canada? <laughs> so the stories from 20, 30, 40 years ago, especially before 9-11, is, you know, they just, it was kind of like, hey, you know, and go by. No, it's, there's a border crossing. It's called a point of entry. There's there's one for the U.S., 500 feet north. There's one for the Canadians. You know, so if you're coming in, you stop at the U.S. If you're going out, you stop at the Canadian. Um, and, you know, they have uh, border uh, officers there, you know, mm-hmm. the uh, customs and, and all that stuff. And you show them your passport or you give them, you know, for us, we can still pretty much get by, just give them a birth certificate and a driver's license or something. You know, they mm-hmm. haven't really cracked down too much on that, but you couldn't cross during that time, you know, at just, all, period. Yeah. Period. You were yeah. And so you could, you could, you, you could see Canada, but you couldn't go into Canada and Canada could see you, but they couldn't come into you. So there's a house that I can see that one of our customers like I can see their house and they can't I can see it it's right there. <laughs> Sometimes we make these rules and we don't really consider just how kind of silly some of it is. And to this day, right? Like they still restrict 
how how late they can come in? Like, isn't it like five yeah. o'clock or something? So the border where we're at used to close at 11 p.m. During COVID, they moved it to 5 p.m. Well, even the administration has said, hey, you know, COVID is over. They haven't moved the time back to 11 p.m. Now, this doesn't just affect me, but it, it, if it does affect, but, you know, everybody, you know, we've got, uh, you know, one of the tribes has a casino here in Bonners Ferry. And, you know, mm -hmm. people would come down after work, get some dinner, maybe go to the casino. Or for me, they would come down after work or school or whatever, get gas, you know, go back, save themselves 20, 30 bucks. Well, five o'clock, they can't, you know, mm -hmm. and they haven't moved it back. So that we have an economic development officer in our county. And he asked me, you know, because many businesses and stuff are, are affected, but I, I don't want to say we were affected the most, but we lost 95% of our customers, you know? Um, yeah. So I wrote a letter that went to both our senators in Washington, our representative, you know, showing, Hey, th this is acutely affecting, you know, us specifically. The, the, the good folks in Creston, those wonderful friends of ours, you know, all those Canadians, they, they're like, why can't we just come down 500 feet? You know, it didn't didn't make a lot of sense. My, my thought was, hey, during that time, I understand, you know, people worried about infection and all that stuff. Well, between us and them is a few hundred feet. I'm like, why couldn't they have a rule that said, hey, if you cross back over the border within 15, 20 minutes, I mean, 10 minutes, they could come down, grab a package, fill up, take a gas and go right back. Like they'd have no time to do anything else. And they would be. That would require creativity and thinking and actually being <laughs> logical about it. Oh. No, it. It seems like we lost all that during COVID. And I guess the point of this podcast is to let people know that it's still going on. There's mm -hmm. still the remnants because there's still these actions that are being taken under the auspices of the emergency. And it's still having a disparate impact. Like, so your business, what percentage have you recovered compared to what it was prior to COVID? Like, so we're just coming out of winter time, you know, and winters are slow. It's definitely after Christmas is pretty slow. Mm -hmm. um, so I would it's say we may be back to 25 or 30%. I'm hoping this summer as we're moving in that the routine starts again, if they can remove the restriction for those who aren't vaccinated, if they can move the hours back to where it was, you know, I think we could get back to 50%. I I, I don't know where those other 50% have gone. Some people have said, hey, they just, they got out of the habit of coming down or, you know, they just don't think about mm -hmm. it anymore. You know, we've advertised up there. I've done radio spots with, uh, with uh, the local, local radio stations up there and done some things, but, you know, advertise, we're just, we're just still, it's just not to be quite frank. We're still, we're still in a negative every month, just not as much as it was. Thank goodness. Cause we weren't going to be able to hold on. And there were no programs, none of these grants. You see all these shuttered venues and all that stuff, all these different grants. You wouldn't qualify for any of them, right? I don't, you know, we, we, we've looked at some of those. We, we definitely applied for, you know, one of them. Um, I won't mention it, but it was a really big one. You, you, uh, you had told me about it. Mm -hmm. uh, we made a video and filled out their whole application and stuff. And and, nothing. and, and it was, man, it was tough. So, uh, so, so big institutions, but l lots of folks got all this PPP money, the employee retention credits and all that stuff. And you guys got kind of left out in the, it, left out in the middle of nowhere. All those things they said they were doing for small business. I didn't see much. Of. Now, now you wrote your Congress people, your senators and your local politicians. And, 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 and I know that you've had some discussions with newspapers. Oh, yeah. mean, we, we were on CBS this morning. They came up, spent four hours filming us and stuff and put us on, on CBS. Uh, one of our senator staff uh, in 2021, September, 2021, uh, they were coming to do a tour of North Idaho. And uh, we had, we, we, provided lunch for them. We, they came in, we spent two hours with them, told them yeah. our whole story, you know, that we have not been sitting in a corner, you know, we've been trying to think of anything that could happen uh, mm -hmm. to, to, to make this, you know. But you're still there. You've, you've, you've been persevering. Nobody still. came and helped except some good people. I know our listeners donate a little bit. We, which, we, uh, by the way, you still can. 
I'll, uh, I'll, I'll put a link up. Uh, you know, you can always go to the Jake's landing USA.com, but realistically go to the link that I'm going to put up. It's a Venmo. If you want to, if, if you want to be generous, this is one of those situations where this is true. This is true giving. Cause you're not going to get anything for it other than maybe if you see Lars someday and you stop off, maybe, maybe you get a big old thank you, but come see us. We would yeah. love, we would love for everybody to come see, you know, um, because you mentioned it, I just, I just feel really important me to say to anyone out there that did help us, if it wasn't for those earthly angels, we would not be here. The government didn't come to our rescue. No institution came to rescue, but individuals came in ways that I never thought. I, it was extremely humbling. It was extremely humbling. And we're here still because of them, but we're still at a net deficit. You know, one of the things you don't think, I didn't think about it is, well, you're just, you're trying to make your bills. You're trying to, you know, do what's needed. But then you have repairs, you have maintenance. We had no money for that. That mm -hmm. stacks up. And so even if we can get profitable, there's going to be, it's going to take us a while to catch all that stuff up. You know, with two gas stations, you know, there, there's a lot of regulation with gas stations. I'm dealing with that right now. You know, there's a lot of costs, especially when it's been hard to keep the maintenance up, you know. So there's that stuff. But we've had, as, as you pointed out, there's been a lot of people who have who've helped us. And I, I, exactly. I'm a self-sufficient. I'm, I'm <laughs> we've known each other for a long time. Um, you know, I, I'm not used to being in this type of a situation. And um, mm -hmm. but you know what, God. God gives you trials and struggles and tribulations to, you know, help you grow. And I'm trying. I haven't done too good some days. Some days are harder than others. But you know what? We're just going to keep persevering. You're going to get through it. I have no doubt. And, uh, and, and again, if anybody's willing to help, please help uh, every, every little bit. And uh, hopefully this time next year, we have another conversation. And you're saying how you're back and it's it's come back and it's a great success story. Until that time, we're just going to keep fighting for you. We're going to keep encouraging you. And, uh, and again, if anybody's able to help, uh, absolutely do it. Lars, I really appreciate you coming on and sharing your story because a lot of folks, they get the tidbits on the news. They A lot of restaurants and stuff got really torpedoed and you saw a lot of people never come back from that. Yeah. But then you still see people that have make, they're making it through. They're hanging on by their fingernails. Yeah. And we just need to let them succeed. We need to quit doing this craziness, like the fact that we still have this restriction. And I don't even know how many countries have that restriction. I'd, I'd guess it's very few. And we're still I doing think. this to our own citizens. Well, <sighs> hey, Toby, if, if any of your you know listeners um, would like to go on a road trip this summer, we got Airbnb up here, so they can Airbnb go to Airbnb. We've got we've got uh, camping sites. We we have nine hundred feet of riverfront property, you know, with with this this little flat area, beautiful. You know, they can camp. I think my wife set us up on dirt and, and you have an uh, airstrip and stuff, can, right? Yeah. The, well, what I've been told is one of the longest. I don't know if that's true, but one of the longest uh, grass air air landing. Yeah. Uh, the planes land. We, we have two guys that every week they come in, they fly in, they go get a coffee, they hang out at the store for a little bit, you know, they're visiting with my wife and stuff, you know, and then they fly out. Uh, that was happening all the time before, by the way. Um, but uh, yeah, this is called Eckhart International Airport because you can fly in Canada. <laughs> it's kind of amazing. Look it up on, on uh, YouTube or, or, uh, or uh, you know, well, Google, you guys. Yeah, you know, We've got a lot of stuff happening right there. If they've got boats, we got to launch into the river. Now the river, the Kootenai River, it flows north. And where the boat launch is, if you just sit there, you're going to go into Canada within a couple hundred feet. So, you know, it's a very unique place. Where in the world can you go where there's a river running north into another country? Most rivers run south or west or east, you know, to get to the oceans and stuff. This is running north. It's a very unique spot that we're that we're at, Port Hill. So, so, so if you want to see a river that's going north, come on up and visit Lars. Fill up your tank. Well, if, if, if drive up there. You can fill up your tank and uh, bring your kayaks. Bring your fishing poles. My son caught a 17-inch rainbow trout with this piece of string or whatever it was. Maybe it was a line, but with a worm right off our bank. You know, so <laughs> come, come see us. Yeah, All we'd right. love to. See, I'd love to have anybody. Well, thanks for coming on, Lars. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Toby.